All right. Your next comic is such a delight. Please welcome to the stage, Izzy Lahani. <laughs> So that's okay. I'm glad that I'm glad that we're getting that out of the way. It's Lebanese. Uh, my family is Lebanese. My father actually is Lebanese. Uh, Lebanon's a weird place. You guys ever been? No. Yeah. Uh, I don't recommend it. Uh, it's one of those places you need to know your whereabouts before you go. And my dad was like born there. He grew up there. Uh, so I invited him out to lunch one day when I decided to go visit for the first time. I was like, Dad, is there anything I need to know about Beirut? But he was really suspicious because I only ever ask him for money. <laughs> and he was like, what do you really want? I'm like, no, Dad, I just want advice. And he goes, oh, advice? I'll give you advice. Don't get raped. Wow. And I was like, oh, thanks for the advice, Dad. That's great. I'll follow that to a T. He says, no, really. I need to sell you for goats when you get home. It's part of my retirement plan. But I didn't have the heart to tell him that I'm already worth zero goats. <laughs> zero goats, you guys. <laughs> I live in Hollywood now. Hollywood's pretty cool. Didn't you guys agree? Yeah, I like it. I think for a city with 17 Spider-Men, we have an awful lot of crime. <laughs> I know this because I got robbed on 420. I got robbed on 420 and they left my weed on the counter. What kind of fucking holiday are we celebrating here? <laughs> Thank God they left the weed behind. I needed something while I waited three hours for the LAPD that lives down the street. Man, they took... I feel like moving here, though, gave me a lot of zen because when I walked in on my apartment, everything of value was missing. I wasn't mad. I wasn't upset. I just walked in on my apartment, saw everything gone, and was like, oh. No way! This is just like you! <laughs> this is so sweet! It's not my favorite way for you to express your feelings for me, but that's okay, we're in this together. Thank you for this. So I, I called the LAPD, and, uh, and when they came, I was like, I got a whole list of suspects. You know, it might be another comic, or my ex-girlfriend, my neighbor who probably does meth. They're like, oh man, sounds like you should go get your shit back. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's what I called you. They're like, no, man, we're the LAPD. We got real problems. <laughs> real problems, man. I smoke too much weed. That's my problem. I just sit at home and play Mortal Kombat all day. Do you guys know this game? Yeah? I love this game. I love this game because now it's on my phone. I don't have to memorize buttons. I just tap a screen all day. And every time I get a combo right, it encourages me. <laughs> it's like, excellent. Impressive. <laughs> I want that voice to follow me around all the time. Like when I get a good grade in school, excellent. When I get a girl's phone number, impressive. When I'm driving down the street and someone cuts me off, finish him. I'm just kidding, I don't drive. I don't drive, I live in LA, people are like, how do you survive? It's real easy, I don't get parking tickets. <laughs> you know what, and I know what I look like, guys. And uh, the other night I was walking home from work, which is why it confuses me that I still get sexually harassed on the street. Because I was dressed like this, I had on this hat, I was carrying a backpack, I had an extra pair of shoes, I looked like a 12 year old homeless boy. <laughs> but some guy pulled up to me anyways, and he goes, hey girl, can I help you out with the ride? And I said, no thanks, I'm good. And I kept walking, but he revved up. He goes, are you sure? And I said, yep, I'm positive. And I went on about my way, because I'm sure this guy is a really nice guy. <laughs> Just trying to give me a ride home. But the thing is, what I heard was, hey girl, want to get raped? No thanks, I'm good. Are you sure? Yep, I'm positive. I continue on about my way, and as I'm almost home, he pulls up a third time. This time with candy. <laughs> he says, 
are you sure I can't help you change your mind? I'll be honest, I was scared. I was right next to my house, and he had Snickers bars. <laughs> I was yelling, that's my favorite candy. <laughs> Naturally, I told him to fuck off. I figure if I'm gonna get raped and murdered, I should go out fighting. But he just got butt hurt. I was like, I'm just trying to help you make some money, and then he drives away. I was like, damn it. I like money. I'm poor, man. I'm so proud to give him cocaine. I mean, it came down to that. And if I wanted to feel awesome for five minutes and regret and shame for the next 15, I just masturbated so much cheaper. <laughs> so much cheaper. I'm so poor, people's advice to me is to not eat. Like, that's their advice to me, you guys. I'm so, and being poor and white in adulthood is really hard. And before anybody plays their smallest violin for me, it is. Because when you show up to your adulthood broke, people look at you like a fourth grader that showed up without their science project. <laughs> Were your parents supposed to do this for you? Where's your money? <laughs> but anyway, what else is going on? Mm. I just had my birthday. Woo! Yeah, guys, me and Bobby just had my birthday. We we're both born in June of 1990. Or me, and, me and, sorry, me and the Metro just had a birthday. Bobby did too, her birthday was on the 4th. And me and the Metro, we share a birthday, right? Both born in June of 90, means we're both Geminis. Me and the Blue Line. That's why it's so crazy down there. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out we have a lot else in common too, you know? Like we're both in need of constant maintenance. We're both frequently solicited by homeless people. <laughs> Other than that, most people don't know that we exist. <laughs> Which is true, because I'm, I'm what society labels as a bisexual, I'm an existentialist, I don't believe in labels. So I prefer to tell people that I'm half gay. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes it super hard to date in LA, because lesbians won't date me, because they're afraid I'll leave them for a dude. Dudes will only date me, because they think they can get a three-way out of it. <laughs> Which you gotta be like at least an eight, on a scale of one to ten, to ask a girl that at a bar randomly and get away with it. <laughs> I mean, it's okay if you're like a seven and the girl's your friend. <laughs> or four if you're at a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, social etiquette, I feel, it just like saves a lot of us time. You know, because we live in a city, man. Our time is precious. You know what it's like to date in a city? It's like going grocery shopping when you're hungry. You can't date when you're hungry. You're going to make bad decisions. <laughs> We've all done it. We've all left the house a little too high, a little too late at night. Woken up the next morning, found a stack of fucking Lunchables in our bed, like, who bought all these Lunchables? <laughs> Who's gonna eat these? <laughs> you didn't get the good kind, you didn't get the kind with the Capri Sun and the Snickers. <laughs> no, you got the shitty trees and cracker ones because you had too much wine and you were feeling fancy. <laughs> Things. We're gonna have Lunchables texting you for days trying to Netflix and chill. <laughs> Alright, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>